All right, guys, I want to talk about how you can improve or increase your IQ. Now, this is actually a very interesting topic because a lot of people don't know this and they assume that your IQ, when I say IQ, I mean your intelligence quota, is something that's like set in stone and you can't change it. That's not actually true. You can, with a bit of work, you know, and doing the right things and eating and, you know, eating and drinking the right things and doing the right uh, exercises, you can actually increase your IQ by about 20 to 50 points which is actually quite a lot. You know, that's going to make a bit of a difference. That's going to make a big difference, actually, in terms of how how available your intelligence is, how available your mental capacity is to you. So there's a few ways that I want to start by doing this. And what I'll do is I'll, at the end, I'll explain, like, the, I guess you could say, the instant fixes, the things that you can do sort of now that are going to make a difference now. Okay, but first I want to talk about the foundations, because if you don't do this stuff, if you don't get the foundations right, you're going to miss the whole point here. And uh, it's really going to be something that's difficult for you. Okay, so the first thing that you need to think about when you're trying to improve your IQ, you need to realise that firstly IQ is a bit of a flawed test. It doesn't really measure things like your emotional intelligence, you know, or your... There, there are certain levels of thinking and different abilities that you can have which don't necessarily correlate with a high IQ. So although a high IQ is something to boast about, you know, it makes your ego feel good if you can say that your score is higher than somebody else's, in terms of your available intelligence, it doesn't make that much of a difference. That being said, it's still important, okay? And these things that I'm going to show you, these things are going to help you improve your overall intelligence, not just your IQ, although it will affect your IQ, but everything. Okay, so how how well you can articulate yourself, how well you can bring memories and thoughts to, to mind when you need them. You know, all of these different things, it's gonna help you with that. Okay, it's gonna help you with all of those different mental acuity related performance tasks. Th things the way you need to use your brain in an, in an effective way. So the first thing, and believe it or not, this is actually probably the most important thing, is what you eat and when you eat it, I should say. So there are two parts to this. Firstly, what you eat. Let's just talk about that. The, th the foods that you put into your body directly relate to how well you can use your brain and body. The things that you eat literally become your whole body. You've heard the phrase that you are what you eat. That's so true. So literally, like, say if you're, eat if you're pounding hamburgers and cheeseburgers and sugar and stuff every day, of course your body is not going to get the nutrients it needs from that. Of course. Right, and of course you're going to suffer mentally in terms of how well you can use your brain. You're gonna have brain fog, you're gonna be slow and stupid, essentially. You, you need to think about the foods that you're essentially just consuming on a daily basis. That is gonna make the biggest difference combined with the second thing that I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna lecture on you know the benefits of a vegan or plant-based diet because th I think deep down we all sort of know that's the right thing to do. Not from a moral point of view, but just from a health perspective, we inherently know, if you really think about it in a quiet room when your friends aren't there to laugh at you, you, you know that a salad is healthier than a burger. You know that pounding cheeseburgers and crisps and sugar and chocolate, that is less healthy than eating a varied plant-based diet. Like, you'd have to be pretty silly to, to really think that the junk food, fast food diet is more healthy than a plant-based diet. So we sort of already know that stuff. You know, put, let's put the science and studies aside for a second. You know that there is a certain type of food that you should be eating and a certain type of food that you probably shouldn't be eating. Just be honest with yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to label it as some sort of diet or some sort of routine or a set of rules. Just consider what you genuinely think is the healthy, healthiest thing to eat and then just do that. Now, of course, you do need to research it to some degree because you might think genuinely that eating loads of chips and mayonnaise and sugar is healthy. Um, you might think that for some reason. It gets like a bit of a, it gets into to more of a confusing topic when you talk about things like fish, eggs, you know, dairy, these things. There's always a debate around these things. And until you really do the research and dive into it, which takes a long time, you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be victim to things like myths and to things like to things like these fitness magazines saying that oh this one study shows that eggs are good for you and then next week they say oh this this study shows eggs, eggs are actually bad for you. Forget all that for a second. Just try and shift your focus in terms of what you're eating. Shift your focus from sugary fast food junk food to how can I eat a more healthy diet? Whether that's eating more vegetables, you know, eating more greens and fiber and grains and things like that. Just shift to that. And just from that, you're going to see a huge difference. Now, there are other things related to that, of course, like you could be allergic to certain foods, you know, you could be intolerant to certain foods. The only way of really knowing what you're going to, what's going to be the best thing for you to do is to get an allergy test. 
get a comprehensive allergy test, work out exactly what type of foods you're allergic to, because there's a chance, like say if you're allergic to wheat or gluten or something like this, if you didn't know that and it was just like a minor allergy or a minor intolerance, you could be eating the, the foods that are inflaming your body and your digestive system every day and you don't really notice it other than, oh, you feel a slight brain fog or you feel like you're slightly tired or less energetic and you can't focus on something, right? But until you actually do that allergy test, you'll never be able to say, oh, it's because of this food I'm eating. Because unless it has like a really, vi unless it has a really aggressive reaction in your body, you're just gonna ignore it and you're just gonna assume that that is normal. You're gonna assume that that brain fog caused by whatever food is the normal state and you're just tired because that's who you are. Not true. You shouldn't be feeling tired, you shouldn't feel brain fog, you should be feeling clear and alert almost all day. That's something I, I really do believe, you know, if you don't feel like that, then there's something wrong at some point, you know, whether that's with your diet, your sleeping, your mindset, your whatever it is, but there is, a, there is normally a cause to how you're feeling. So if you're not feeling alert all day, it's probably because of your diet. And, you know, to go micro within that, it's probably because of a certain type of food within your diet that you've been eating for a long time that you don't know you're allergic to or intolerant of. So that's that's the food side of things, right? I almost forgot to say, there's one very important thing about the foods you eat, and that is this. When you eat foods, whatever the food is, right, you're gonna get a surge of insulin. This is your body's reaction to the sugar in the food. Most foods contain sugar, okay? Yeah, of some degree. When you eat these foods and your body reacts in this way, you feel, at least to some degree, sluggish. You feel slow, you feel tired, okay, fatigued. I would advise actually not eating anything and just getting all of your energy from water. No, I'm, I'm joking. No, what I would advise is not eating anything from when you wake up until about one or two in the afternoon. This is known as intermittent fasting. You've probably heard this on various other podcasts and things. It's a very healthy and useful way of getting, you've you got to understand that when you eat a meal, your digestive system activates, you start digesting it, you start feeling tired and feeling like you need to rest, etc. right? But if you don't eat a meal, your mental powers are pretty much doubled. Now I've, I've tested this myself and I've, I find that if I compare my mental performance before eating a meal to after eating a meal, it's, it's halved. So what I would suggest to do is just don't eat anything from when you wake up until about one or two in the afternoon, and then from then on, from one or two p.m., you can then eat until you go to bed, or until, you know, dinner time, whatever. Just having that mental energy in the morning is so, so useful. I like to do, they say you do your best work within the first, say, six hours of waking up. It's so true, really is so true, and that's why I like to wake up early between 5 and 7 a.m. sometimes, it varies a bit depending on where I am, but I like to wake up early and just do the hardest part of my day's work straight away without eating. If you wake up and then you do a little routine and then you have breakfast, you, by the time you start working, your body's just starting to digest the food and your mental powers are just gone, you know, and I'm sure you've found this for yourself. We're all familiar with how how bad that slump is in the middle of the day when you've just finished lunch. Normally happens between two and three in the afternoon and your body's just digesting that big lunch you've had and you find that you can't focus on anything, you can't work properly, you can't concentrate. And it's because, firstly, because of the food you are eating, it probably isn't the best. You know, maybe it's not the healthiest food you could be eating, but secondly, even if it is, there is always some degree of fatigue after eating a meal. The bigger the meal, the more the fatigue, usually. For that reason, I like to, at the very, very most, I will have a small smoothie in the morning, just enough so that when I take my multivitamin, I'm not gonna feel nauseous because it's on an empty stomach. That is it. Most, and probably eight, eight or nine times out of 10, probably eight or nine times out of 10, I don't even do that. I just wait until lunchtime. And that has given me so much mental energy, like the work I've done and how much more productive I've been just by doing that, is far, far more important to me than feeling a little bit hungry during the morning. And to be honest, you don't, once you've done it a few days, you don't even notice it. Like you don't even feel like you need to have breakfast. It's only in your mind. Next thing, and this is something that I, I speak a lot about on my Lucid Dreaming channel, is your sleep. The, the way you sleep, how often and with what quality makes a huge difference to how you feel and what energy you have during the day. So, and I'm just gonna simplify this because this is gonna be a huge video otherwise. I'm gonna simplify this. We are essentially mammals, okay? We are mammals that operate in terms of biology and systems. So the systems in our body, specifically the hormonal systems associated with sleeping and waking up, are no, it's known as your circadian rhythm. So when, you, when the sun rises in the morning, 
and the light enters our retinas and, and shines on our bodies, our bodies produce something called serotonin, which is a hormone designed to wake you up, give you energy and make you feel alive and give you the strength and energy you need to go about your day. Okay, this is when the sun shines into you or onto you or into you. Conversely, when it's dark, when the sun goes down at night, so you need to turn the lights on and all that stuff, your body produces something called melatonin, which is the sleep hormone, the hormone of darkness. When this is in your bloodstream, you feel tired, you feel like you want to sleep, you feel like your system starts shutting down and you literally have less energy and you're able to focus less because your brain is starting to go to sleep. This happens whether we like it or not. This is who we are, this is how we're coded as human beings. This happens to all of us, but what happens in modern civilization, in today's society, what happens when the sun goes down, it gets dark, we turn the light on. And so what that's doing is that's keeping us in this awake state, of course, right? We, we want to stay awake. But it's, it's making sure that the serotonin keeps being produced by our bodies, and our bodies can't produce the melatonin, which is essential for falling asleep, right? Our bodies are designed to produce a certain level of melatonin when it gets dark, and that's designed to peak up to a point here where you feel so tired that you fall asleep. And when you do it, right, when you actually fall asleep in, an, uh, in alignment with this system, with a circadian rhythm, you don't worry about things like insomnia. You, you don't worry about things like not being able to fall asleep on time, you know, or taking hours to fall, unheard of, right? When you do it properly, when you're in line with that circadian rhythm, as we should be as human beings and mammals, there's no problem whatsoever. You know, unless you have a really unusual disor sleep disorder or something like this, if you're in line with your circadian rhythm, you will fall asleep immediately. Like as soon as you, almost as soon as your head hits the pillow, if you're in line with this this system and this process. But most people aren't in line with it. They just, and you know, for, for, through no fault of their own, we've been brought up in a society based around entertainment. You know, we get back from work at five. We think, oh, well, I've not had a very fun day. I want to entertain myself. I want to do something fun for the rest of the day. And because it's already dark, you think, oh, well, I'll have to turn the light on. I'll watch a film. I'll go on my laptop. I'll watch, you know, Netflix or whatever. But in the, in the wild, in nature, that's not what would happen. What would happen is the sun would go down, your melatonin levels would rise, you'd become so tired that you can't stay awake and you'd fall asleep. Simple as that. That's, you know, what most, unless you're nocturnal, that's what animals do. So bear that in mind. Okay, if you, if you have trouble sleeping, just follow that one thing. Try and go to sleep when it's dark and wake up when, it's, when the sun rises. Okay, now depending on what part of the world you live in, that's going to be, you know, more or less difficult. Unless you're in somewhere like Scandinavia or, you know, in the southern part of the world, you're, it's going to be fine, right? You know, the sun rises and sets at reasonable times, <laughs> you know, unless you have to be at work at a certain time, you know, maybe you have to get up before the sun rises or you come home from work after the sun has set. You can't, it can't be perfect. You can't be perfect with this thing, especially in today's world. But if you have the flexibility to decide when you wake up and go to sleep, then follow the sun. Or at the very least, okay, if you can't do that, if you, for, through whatever reason, if you can't do that, just make sure that for two hours before you go to sleep, you don't watch any screens, you don't look at your phone, you just do something else, you know, maybe relax, play an instrument, meditate, have a bath, whatever it is, just do something other than looking at something that's going to give blue light to your body. Now, there are ways around this. You can, If you have to look at your laptop or if you really want to, you um, can download pro you can download programs like Flux, fl.ux. It's not a typo. That is what the program's called. You can find links in the description or just Google it. What that does is it takes the blue light out of the screen so that you aren't kept awake by the screen. It, it looks like a red or sort of orange glow on the screen and it takes a bit of getting used to, to be honest, but if you do that, you know, you can use your laptop and you don't have to worry about things like blue light or, you know, serotonin and things like that. So thirdly, and this is, bear in mind, we're, st we're still talking about how to increase your IQ, right? So this does all affect it, believe it or not, in a huge, huge, huge way. So the third thing is to do things that challenge you in every way you can imagine, right? So humans are built, it, humans are built to seek comfort and avoid discomfort. Okay, this is the, the the premise of the limbic system, the reptilian brain. There's loads of different names for it and loads of different processes and terms. But in a nutshell, we're, we are wired as humans to avoid things that are uncomfortable for us. Now, unfortunately, we can only grow and get stronger by doing those uncomfortable things. So at a certain point, you have to say, right, well, I'm going to push myself to do the uncomfortable thing in order to get stronger. This is why we go to the gym. This is why we exercise. This is why we study things to learn. And it's essentially how you're going to take your brain and create that adaptation response within it. So when we subject ourselves, you know, body or mind to a stress, the body or mind reacts by adapting. So say if you lift a weight and it's slightly too heavy for you to manage comfortably, 
next time you lift it, your body will have grown stronger in order to adapt to that stress. So you get stronger. That's how that's how weightlifting works. That's how you build muscle, etc. etc. So with your mind, it's sort of the same thing. If you if every single day all you do is you know you file some paperwork at work, for example, come back, watch Netflix, um, play a video game. Like there's there's no there's no stress on your brain, really. There's there's no there's nothing to cause you to need to have a higher IQ. Just like if you went to the gym and you never lifted any weights, you wouldn't get stronger. So you need to force your brain, force yourself to do things that are mentally challenging every single day, whether that's doing a puzzle, doing a riddle, you know, there are different brain training games you can do, even even really small things that you think will just make no difference, but things like brush your teeth with, with, a, with your opposite hand, okay, or use the mouse on your computer with the opposite hand. Try and train ambidexterity into your routine. So you're not just reliant on one hand, you're reliant on you're using both equally. If you're read if you're reading books, which you should be, try and read a little bit faster. Try and speed read and skim things. Try just constantly push your your mind and your body to do things more efficiently, faster, better, whatever you want to call it. And if you do that, your brain will start adapting. It really will start adapting faster than you think. So the last thing. And this is what I probably assume most of you are looking for. When you came to this video, you wanted the instant fix. Because let's be honest, we all do, you know, we're not very patient as as a species, are we? So the I guess you could say the instant fixes that you could do are there's a there's a mixture of things. So firstly, meditate every morning. Okay. It's not as instant as you'd like, but it's gonna make a big difference to the clarity and the, the stillness that you can bring to your mind. Secondly, if you need to supplement, what I would suggest you do is to take a good multivitamin and something like OptiNeuro or MindLab Pro. So these, are, the, the multivitamin goes without saying, you need to have you know a good level of nutrients and vitamins in your body in order to do everything properly. Okay, you need to have the right stuff in your body. The other two I mentioned are actually what's known as nootropics. These are smart drugs. So these are actually a really exciting thing that, you know, I'm obsessed with this stuff. You know, I love finding out about these things and learning how they work and testing different nootropics and things like this. If you've seen the film Limitless, you're familiar with um, roughly how it works. You take a drug or, a, you know, a, a nootropic and it enables your brain to fire on all circuits. It enables you to increase the, the level of mental energy that you have. And there are different ones for different things, different ones for like focus, you know, studying, learning all sorts of different things. The ones I like to take are purely based on the brain. They are based on just increasing how well you can use your brain, how fast you can think, and how well you can access memories and that sort of thing, right, creativity. So the ones I mentioned, OptiNeuro is a really, really effective nootropic. I actually have been using this one for a while. It does it does contain caffeine, but it's balanced out with L-theanine, which for those of you who don't, you probably don't care actually, but if you for those of you who do care, when you take caffeine, you get those that boost of energy, mental and physical, but you also get those jitters, right? So you get shaky hands or whatever, and then after a couple of hours, you feel like you need another hit of caffeine, whether that's through a coffee or a supplement or whatever. When you balance it with L-theanine, you eliminate those side effects and you make the effects of the caffeine last longer. So L-theanine should always be paired with caffeine in a, in a nootropic. Anyway, I'm not gonna go too much into nootropics because that's another video, but OptiNeuro has guana, extract which contains natural caffeine and it also contains l-theanine and a bunch of other stuff you know really really good ingredients basically it gives you a mental energy boost for about six hours and i can't fault it it's really good really effective they say you should take three capsules i just take one or two and yeah i've been using it for a while very good nootropic now mind lab pro is like the bigger version of that the better version it's slightly more expensive it doesn't contain caffeine but it doesn't need to because it's containing so many high power effective ingredients that you don't need the caffeine to get the mental boost and in, in all honesty it's probably healthier for you to not have the caffeine at all because when you ingest caffeine you you engage things like your dopamine system you become if you take it in the wrong way and if you don't cycle it you can become reliant on it i'm sure you're aware that people who abuse caffeine you know people who have coffee every single day they feel like they need coffee every single day in order to be human in order to actually do anything or be productive so don't get to that point, you know, don't abuse caffeine to the point where you, you're reliant on it. I never, I would never suggest you become reliant on anything. You know, it's, with nootropics, I only supplement them when they add to what I'm already doing and where you want to have a, a strong foundation before you do anything like nootropics. 
You want to have that really, really strong foundation of good sleep, good diet, you know, good mindset, good habits, meditation, things like this. When you've when you've got all of that, and that's that's why I'm, I'm putting this stuff at the end of the video because when you've got all of that, if you then take a nootropic, it does incredible things for you. You know, like in the film Limitless, when they say it works better if you're already smart. If you already have that foundation, and then you take a nootropic, huge results, right? A huge success. But if you just come to the video or the article or wherever you're, you know, trying to get a nootropic, if you just come online and you search for the limitless pill, okay, and you just assume that you can have all of these great results and all of this success without changing anything about your lifestyle, you're not. It's it's not going to work. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So and you, you might get a small boost from the caffeine, but apart from that, your mental powers, they're gonna be pretty much the same. You know, not much is gonna change up there unless you have that foundation and then you supplement in the right way. And it's a, it's a, a bigger picture type scenario. That was a long video to make, but that's how you can become limitless. That is how you can increase your IQ, your intelligence quota. That's essentially, if you do all of that stuff, you will become smarter, not just in terms of your IQ, but your your entire persona and character will become a smarter one you know you'll be able to think faster you'll be able to learn better remember things more accurately and people will perceive you as being a clever person anyway if you are interested in those nootropics i mentioned there are links in the description i think you can get discounts on some of them that's it for now guys but remember don't try and look for the magic bullet or the you know the quick fix for your intelligence it's not there you know you might find a small short-term boost but the real results are gonna come from putting in the work, building the habits, building the foundations, and then if you need to have like that cherry on the top, go for something like, like a nootropic, but don't rely on them. Done.